Sabiko Hibisco is the definition of weird. You've got exploding mushrooms, bunny heads in suits, and crab. Just crab. Oh, and you know, the rest of the world. A single glance at the trailer or any episode is probably enough to think you're high on drugs, but trust me, this anime is a gem. Because of the big mainstream shonen juggernauts and the anime adaptation of cosplay Sid Snap, I feel like many other anime are being overlooked this season, and this one is the one I wanted to talk about the most. So let me fanboy over some mushrooms for a second here. An anime with a setting as weird as this one is always welcome. I mean, think about it. We're always stuck with isekai fantasy world, high school, human eating monsters in high school, waifu eating monsters in high school, that, you know, mushroom terrorism is actually fucking appealing. I mean, bro, I've heard of being high on mushrooms, but Jesus Christ, you're gonna reach the fucking heavens at this rate. The world being introduced here is a fantasy world, but with very abstract and unfamiliar concepts. No longer do we go, Haha, magic isekai sword swing skill level up, wee, elemental boom, anymore. Everything here is so unique, and I feel like that's a shining gem nowadays. I found myself very invested in this fantasy world, always wanting to learn more because it's so different from what my trash self is normally used to. And to me, that just screams amazing world building. Let me give you a brief rundown on the premise. The world is set in a post-apocalyptic Japan, where a strange disease called rusting has destroyed much of the world. Pandacon here is one of the best doctors in town and works to help prevent this disease from spreading in people too much, while secretly using illegal mushrooms in an attempt to find a cure. Oh, also he has a badass dying sister. Badass, yes, but you know, still dying. Our other main character, Bisco, is a wanted mushroom keeper with a giant bounty on him as in this world, it is believed that mushrooms are the source of this rusting disease. Bisco travels the world in search of a legendary cure for the rusting. As a mushroom keeper, he uses mushrooms as his main way of fighting, and hence is labeled a mushroom terrorist. Damn, I knew the world was never fair to begin with, but if Bisco is a mushroom terrorist, then Mario must be a fucking mushroom genocider. There are also a bunch of other characters like Evil Governor and Pink Bugs Buddy the Netflix adaptation. I could tell you a bit more of the plot, but I think it would be best to leave it there and let you experience the entire clusterfuck firsthand. The anime does a very good job at explaining its world's mechanics, so despite the clusterfuck of an outlook, I think you'll get used to it really fast. To me, the most capturing part of the anime is definitely the world. We've had many post-apocalyptic settings before, but it feels unique even amongst those. It's one of those worlds that feels like it was come up with the creativity and imagination of a child, but with the proper writing and consistency of a proper story. Watching the anime makes me feel like a fucking 10 year old wandering around a new place trying to find tools to build new things. Every episode is satisfying because you feel like a new part of the world was explored and you learn something new about this unknown fantasy universe. The best part is that everything is so weird and what the fuck that you never see it coming. I mean hippos with machine guns giant snail planes and mushrooms that trampoline you a billion stories high? What the fuck doesn't exist here? Next thing you're gonna fucking tell me that I can physically touch NFTs! This is the child's imagination that I absolutely adore and I've been completely invested in the world being created here every single week. The interesting concept and creativity isn't the only thing making the world so good though. It's also how it's presented. What I think it's super well done here is the anime tells you enough about the world to give you a basic understanding of how everything works, but enough hidden to still make the world a big mystery. You understand basic things like the concept of rusting and mushrooms, but when watching the journey as a whole, you still have no idea what the hell could happen or what the hell to expect. What is rusting actually? How does this legendary cure exist? What exists in the outer world? Why in fuck is the FBI just rabbits now? What in the fuck is a mushroom actually? Why are you coming from a giant parasite worm killing you from the inside? <laughs> it's all a mystery. 
It's the perfect amount for compelling storytelling without making you feel like everything makes absolutely no sense. It's only been a few episodes, so I can't clearly tell because I'm not fucking psychic like those cheeky light novel readers. But I'm hoping all these built up mysteries pay off well and give satisfying answers. The world built here is so gigantic with so many unknown factors, and so much ambition feels like it's being put into the whole thing. I can really see this evolving into an amazing story, given enough time, and I genuinely hope it does, cause this is a fucking amazing world. Unlike ours. Why the fuck can't I travel the world with my personal military level crap? Injustice, I say. Of course, that's not to say that the world is the only redeeming factor of the show, not even close. The characters are great too. I mean, hey, for starters, at least we don't have black hair Kirito clone number fucking infinite this time. We have genuinely unique and well-designed characters. Like, someone finally remembered that two genders exist in anime, and waifus with their taste the rainbow motherfucker hair colors isn't the only flashy thing in the anime. I'll say it, I love the chemistry between the main duo. I don't think it's the newest idea in town, just the rough rude guy and the kind goody shoes guy, but hey, it works for the journey. It feels like I'm seeing two bros just interacting and growing closer over a long journey and I die for shit like this. The adventure vibe I get from this is amazing and weirdly, I feel like non-bullshit isekai adventure anime is getting harder and harder to find. Oh, and on the topic of characters, you fuckers do get waifu choices in this anime. Let's see who we've got here. We have Rusty Satsuki from Kill a Kill. We have a trap, but it's okay because he awakens some weird panda fetish in you. And finally, we have a gold digger. What do you mean you don't want a gold digger? Don't fucking act like we aren't scammed out of our money by waifus every day. Go check your gacha game and super chat purchase history, then come back to me. Okay, but really, some characters here might feel slightly tropey because they are. But I think in the episode so far, they are all genuinely likable characters and serve the story very well. They have all progressed the plot in a satisfying way up to this point, so I have no complaints in that department. I don't normally talk about animation or OST because that conversation usually just turns into OH MY GOD SAKUGA YOU FOLDABLE BUDGET TAX FRONT GO BRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRR